And we're here with Jeff Bradditch, who has just published Double Bass, The Ultimate Challenge. Uh, and I thought it would be great to just take a look at this book and see some of the some of what Jeff's got inside. Uh, so yeah. there it is, thirty years worth right there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on it literally. I've obviously been thinking about bass playing and how it works both uh -huh. for me and then as a teacher how it works for other people um, for. 30 years now that I've been teaching, and I've worked industriously on this for probably 20 years, uh -huh. on and off, and uh, it's finally happened, so yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of unique in that it's, uh, there's no other one really like it. It's not a method, uh -huh. but it takes a subject such as, uh, well, shifting is a good example. We just had it there a second ago. Uh, and I like to do a few fun photographs. I thought uh -huh. this would be perfect. There's the bass player in first position and the violinist in first position. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's the bass player at the end of the fingerboard and the violinist at the end of the fingerboard. What's the difference? Uh, obviously, shifting is one of our, our biggest technical issues uh -huh. in terms of playing with the left hand. In fact, it is the biggest issue. Uh, and so I take the issue and define it. There's two basic types of shifts. There's uh, the mechanics of shifting, shifting within a string crossing, descending shifts, ascending shifts, common problems. This is, so instead of my saying, this is how I do it, obviously my opinion is going to come through. I wrote the book. But uh, what I'm trying to do is take the issue and talk about the, the, how to use it, where it applies, how it applies, how to do it technically, ways to work on it, and uh -huh. looking at common problems. Here are common problems in shifting with, you know, anybody's having problems with shifting, they're probably... Uh, in this list right here. Then I take each of those issues and I talk about how to solve them, mm -hmm. what to work on, uh, you know, is it vibrato on this note or is it because we're shifting too fast or the elbow's not high enough, whatever the issue yeah. is. And so that's sort of the whole approach. And then I have about 250 musical examples throughout the book uh, that are defining some of the things. Here's a rather unusual concept where I'm talking about playing perfect fourths and mm -hmm. there's a number of ways to do it. One is uh, first finger and second finger across the string. Uh, in thumb position, it's third finger and second finger straight across the string. But there's also examples where fourth finger to third finger straight across the string mm -hmm. in faster examples actually makes it much easier than trying to bar it with fourth finger or, mm -hmm. or other things like that. So it takes basic fundamentals, talking about it from the, the beginning stage of how yeah. it's played, and then really going into some of these things, which are very advanced uh, left-hand concepts of playing, but if we're going to play these pieces on the highest level possible, we have to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. We have to go beyond uh, just the traditional or, or, or you know, even some of the, the more advanced concepts out there. How, how do you work on them? What do they do? How do they yeah. benefit you? Are they really worth it? This type of thing. And then um, I get a few quotes in here that I, I like to purport. And of course, a lot of photographs uh, describing. Here's a nice one that I like. Uh, it shows if you hold the bass a certain way, your arm angle is going to be such. Uh huh. And obviously, the further away your arm is, like this one, that's harder to play with the bow. It's easier to play with the bow here on the G string, but the bass has to be tilted in more. Mm -hmm. Here's a German bow example playing with the bass tilted in three different positions and, and playing the exact same place at the tip on the G string. Well, if you tilt the bow a certain way, the bow is much more comfortable towards your body. If you tilt the bass another way, it's very far away from your body and uh -huh. makes it much more extreme uh, pressure and tension on your muscles. So I'm not saying, well, I do come across and say what I recommend. Right. But if you're doing it this way, here are the problems you might run into yeah. and things to look out for. Here are ways to solve that uh, issue and so forth. Cool. So, and then the book comes with uh, a 20-page uh, uh, book of exercises. These are really, a, you know, medium hard difficulty to very advanced mm -hmm. difficulty. Obviously, shifting. There's a great left hand fingering mm -hmm. example. Traditional fingering patterns that we have to know, but talking about what fingerings actually work best and how to work on them. Yeah. And this gives you the material to do it different bowing patterns, all that type of stuff. <coughs> As I always say, it's not so much what notes you play, but how you play the notes. Mm -hmm. So if you're working on the thirds exercise, for instance, well, yeah, it's just F and A. How hard is that? Then you go to G and B flat. How hard is that? Well, getting it perfectly in tune is hard. Then you take different bowings, and you build upon the basic fundamental and take it to yeah. the degree. Yeah. That's yeah. how it, it benefits you. And so that's, that's what's going on with this. Oh, great. What a great book. Thanks. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm.